Um, welcome back to this. <laughs> Hello. ASMR. <laughs> this is Kit. Hello. And this is Leah, because no one knows who Leah is either. And this is Caitlin. <laughs> yeah. Um, today we are going to do a mukbang and we went to the temple of Satan, not the temple of Satan, because we're going to worship Satan on a good holy Sunday. Um, <laughs> Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> so, oh yeah, it's, I thought it was Sunday <laughs> on a Saturday. Okay. Um, yeah. So should we show them what we got? I'll do an unboxing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I've got this beautiful wrapper. Lovely wrapper. And inside, a lot of sauce. Sorry. <laughs> so, you guys asked these guys some questions. Um, so, um, and I'm also here. <laughs> <laughs> regarding mental health. So, we're going to answer them for you. Um, let's get them up. <laughs> Someone said, you like my posted on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw that. <laughs> you like it's like, do you have any tips? You like my posted on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make sense. I don't understand. That man keeps walking past. Is he? Mm, oh gosh, right. lock the door. <laughs> you might get us. Like the One question we got was, how do you tell your friends about your mental health? Um, one idea could be you could text them. Um, it might be easier than talking to them in person. What about you guys? What do you think? I think you've got to remember they probably, well, maybe they suffer too. Like, mm -hmm. it's really common to suffer with mental health. So isn't you never like, know. Isn't it like one in four? One in four, yeah. yeah. One in four. So they might be suffering too. So if you tell them about your mental health, they might tell you about theirs. And I also remember that I um, I gave my friends like a leaflet like thing. Did I printed you? it off, yeah, and like let them. Oh. I, didn't, I don't even think I printed it off. I like sent them the link so they yeah, could like understand it. I just did that typical thing of getting really drunk and then crying about it, and then everybody you? knew. Oh. <laughs> well, you could do that. That's a good idea. It's not a tip. But <laughs> it's one way to do it. True. <laughs> But yeah, just remember you're you're not alone, and other people. Yeah, they probably too. they probably have like everyone has mental health. So some people have good mental health, some people have bad. So the next question is how to deal with school and mental health, and how can schools help you? I think it's really important to actually tell the school about your mental health issues. Definitely. E like even if you think that you have like anxiety or depression and you're not diagnosed or like you have something, it's good to mm. open up to them so that Definitely. they're aware and they can make special like changes for you. There's usually some like areas of support in school, like counsellors. Yeah, yeah. That come into school that can help. Mhm. Mm what else do you think? I feel like it, it. It would be hard. Like I found it hard when I was in school because obviously you're surrounded with so many people your age and you mm. don't want to seem different to other people. But you're it's not true, different. It's true. You don't want to stand out. No. But then also, if you need the extra support, it's good to have it. Especially yeah. in a time like school when it's really important. Yeah. You've just got to utilise any support. Say if you have anxiety, they can do things like you can have like a card. And if you need to leave the lesson, you yeah. can leave the lesson when you need to. Yeah. Or you can go home early if you're not feeling like very good. Or you can do exams in a separate room. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I wish that I'd opened up to my school about Same. my mental health issues, but mm. I just didn't. Um, it is hard to. It is. It's tricky because I, well, I did it. I did it really badly because I was head girl, so yeah. I was like, oh, everyone expects this of me, and I can't then let everybody down and be mad. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's not. Really, I still was. Still, you look like you had a cup of tea. <laughs> so where did you get a cup of tea? A cup of gravy. Sorry. <laughs> Gravy if you want. I generally thought that was yeah, my you, cup you of should have pretended it was like black coffee. Yeah, You'd be like, hey, do you want some? <laughs> oh. I'm so full. So am I. But generally thought that was a cup of tea. I remember when I was at school and um, they found out about my anorexia and then they were like, they, I just have to eat in a room separate and um, my cousin and my friend used to sit in there with me. But it used to be so bad because they were supposed to come in and make sure that I'd eaten everything and they wouldn't come in. Make sure, oh, like yeah, they, like they, they never really like did what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to like check. Yeah. They sort of like, get they, made your friends do the job. Yeah, yeah. Which you need people that's more older and yeah, actually and it's not really fair you. on your friends. To that was no, like the one not. thing that my school did do right, um, but it was just really awkward because it was me as like head girl, but mm. also as 
not able to feed herself person yeah um and like the deputy head it's teacher not. just in a room and she was like making sure i ate my boiled tatties and stuff and it was just really what on earth is boiled tatties <laughs> like boiled potatoes oh, boiled potatoes <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> no, you don't have tatties uh, what do we call what do irish people call boiled potatoes spuds to call them spuds no tatties tatties okay <laughs> mashed tatties i just call them boiled potatoes <laughs> We got three different names. Chopping tatties. <laughs> jacket potatoes. <laughs> tatties. Chappy. Chappy. Yeah, chap it tatties. It's Ch like it's like when they're kind of, you know, when tatties are mashed, but they're not mm. like quite mashed. Oh really? So like, they've got like little bits of hard bits in it. Still. Yeah. What, what do they? What do, Oh, they call it like crushed new potatoes on Master Chef. They call it chap it tatties. In the oh. North East. We just call crazy. it not very well mashed mashed potato. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing too exciting. Mm. Also, can you just use your mash it a wee bit more? Yeah, yeah. literally. <laughs> Advice with dealing with depression and anxiety and taking meds for it. Um, I think you're prescribed meds when it gets to a point where you need meds. Yeah. So if all other like things have been tried, like talking and talking therapy well well like, yeah just bit. all different types of yeah. therapies mm -hmm. and also it's an actual like chemical imbalance in your brain so the mm -hmm. medication would help it's like a good thing to take the medication if you need it you should never be ashamed of having to take medication no no but if you but then again if you can cope without medication and with other therapies then it's always best to do the other therapies yeah but you know yourself because mm, it's if, quite hard to come off of that medication yeah yeah definitely mm. But there's no shame in taking medication. No, it's good to take it because um, I remember when I was like really depressed. When, yeah. I, when I started taking, um, I started taking fluoxetine. It was like really helpful. Mm. Like it really does That's help good. if you really need it. So, yeah. But it's also trial and error mm. with a lot of medication. So don't get because they come with a lot of side effects as well. Mm. Oh, definitely. Like if mm. the first thing doesn't work, mm. that doesn't mean that you're beyond help and meds aren't going to help you. Yeah, there's stuff. so many not. different types. Definitely not. And that's something that does frustrate me in that a lot of the people who prescribe meds see like one diagnosis yeah. as being mm. helped by this and mm. so if it doesn't work for you yeah. then meds aren't going to work for you my psychiatrist yeah. is a bit like that with quetiapine oh, like yeah. she yeah. prescribes everybody quetiapine really? and then Thinking when you're like I don't really want to take an antipsychotic mm, yeah. when I'm not psychotic <laughs> yeah. um, she's like oh well meds won't work for you and you're treatment resistant and you never listen to what yeah. like, no what yeah, I'm yeah. saying is this doesn't help me mm. can you find mm. something else that Will that, help that will help you, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's difficult, especially antipsychotics. They come with like Terrible a lot side of side effects. Effect. Yeah. But obviously, if you need it, it's important to take it. Of course. But the thing is, also taking meds, you're not going to get better overnight. It's not going to fix you. No. One, it takes ages to kick it. Well, not ages, but it's not. It you're takes not a gonna, few weeks to. Yeah. You're yeah, not going to take parents. it, and then you wake up and everything's fine. Mm -hmm. And it won't even even after a couple of weeks, it's not going to completely take away all all your worries yeah. and yeah. all your stresses and all your anxieties and your depression yeah it's just like an extra thing to to help yeah. take yeah. The, the edge off it yeah I think absolutely medications can deal with like the side effects that you get from things like depression and anxiety mm. yeah. so you can take like beta blockers to stop your heart mm. racing so yeah. fast and stuff so it can change the physical yeah. effects but the root cause is probably still going to be there yeah it's true and then when you mm. come off that medication that could like if you don't treat the actual medicate, um, you don't treat the actual like illness itself or the problem, mm -hmm. then it's just going to come back when you stop the medication. Yeah, it's yeah, best definitely. To, it's best to combine it with other therapies. Yeah, with therapies. Yeah. But I think sometimes medication can just give you that relief. Yeah. From the physical stuff mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. allows you to deal with the mental stuff. Yeah, it's true. Than, like constantly being tired and lethargic or mm. always like feeling your heart mm. racing and being lightheaded and stuff like that medications can help with that sort of stuff so that you can yeah. deal with the other stuff yeah it is true and there's no shame in taking medication at all mm. no i was gonna say something i can't remember what it was i went through a weird period of being really anti-meds for a while just yeah, because yeah. I want, I was like, I'm living a healthy, holistic lifestyle. Where, <laughs> no, I understand um, what you mean. It was yeah. when I was like super vegan as well. And yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah. Like, I want to do everything naturally and I want to treat my body as it deserves to be treated yeah. and not put chemicals in it and stuff. But there's a difference between not putting aspartame from Pepsi Max in your body, mm. uh, which is a choice. Yeah. That doesn't 
impact mm-hmm. you massively negatively. Um, there's a massive difference between that and not taking something that you need to be emotionally Definitely. stable. Yeah, it's very true. Like, yeah. If you had heart failure, you would take the medication. Yeah. yeah. It's like if you had a physical illness, a lot yeah. of people think it's okay. But then it's like if you have a mental illness, they think like, oh, you, can, you don't have to take it. Mm, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's right. And yeah, I, I'm, I was a bit like that as well. But then if you're like, so if you're in pain and you take painkillers, it's not like you're just getting rid of the pain. Why would you go yeah. suffer? Why would you suffer when you can like, take something to take the edge to, off? Yeah, to yeah. help. Mm-hmm. Of course. Yeah, definitely. You just got to think, what would you say to someone else who's mm-hmm. asking the question? You wouldn't tell them, oh, yeah, suffer. Don't take medication. Just suffer. Yeah. You would say take the medication because it will help you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it is. It's like if somebody had a broken leg and you said, "Don't take any painkillers for that because yeah. it's not actually fixing the leg. Mm. It's just yeah. fixing the pain that mm. you're having to deal with." Absolutely. It's like no, let them That's take a really good that analogy. to yeah. deal with the pain that they're having to deal with, mm. so the leg can heal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's true. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that's a good way of explaining it, mm. actually. Nice food, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually loving this. School colleagues talk a lot about killing themselves, but always say they're kidding. Is there a point where, you, when you must start taking it serious, what they say? So, you said you have. <laughs> once you're finished eating, <laughs> where did the ketchup go? Oh, here. Um, oh, yeah, yes. I've had um, an issue of this with my boss. She's like 40 or 50. Yeah. And, um,. She always talks about stuff and then goes, yeah, lol, made me want to kill myself. Yeah. Oh. And um, then she talks about times where she did try to kill herself. Oh, no. So it's like... So she she's not, like, she's... It's like, joking, she has been serious not. about it in the past, so what? how do I take this? But then... Yeah. yeah. I do the same thing, so who knows? It's hard to know. Um, yeah. I think most of the time, especially if it's young people, I don't want to, like, blanket, mm. but I think it's kind of an in phrase to be like lol mm. kid, I kill myself yeah it's kind of like People a joke but so it's not really now, a joke that you don't know if someone's joking or not yeah but I guess you it's hard to know when to take it seriously you could maybe speak to them privately if yeah. like if someone says it a lot or maybe someone says it and you then they don't normally say it yeah then maybe and like, definitely the way to go about it would be to approach them individually yeah. rather than just in front of in a big way like, like, oh, yeah. are you suicidal yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. speak to them like separately and see mm. see if they're all right and maybe like i don't know watch their behavior see if they show any other signs of being mm. suicidal but at the same time i think if you have experienced that kind of stuff yourself it does make you hyper aware of what other people are saying mm. definitely um, because i've found myself in situations where i've taken what people have said to heart when they just meant it lightly as a joke mm. Mm. um and i guess that kind of just shows that it's not something to joke about and folks shouldn't be joking about it but there will be times where people will think that it's a funny like yeah. quirky thing yeah. to say it's like when then, people say i've got ocd when they're yeah or like oh this is giving me anxiety but they don't actually have like an anxiety mm, yeah. disorder or like i'm so bipolar it's not very good because then it's hard to know when people are actually being serious like mm-hmm. do you really have bipolar or are yeah. you just saying it <laughs> ocd is a really common one mm. is that are you otd or <laughs> and a lot of people because of that idubs memes say that they have crippling depression which because of be- what you know, do you know Idubs, the YouTuber? Oh yeah, no, okay. I've heard of him. Yeah, he like oh. wore a green uh, morph suit and jumped off a table and was like, "I'm gay." Really? You know that guy? No, no I've never heard yeah. of him. <laughs> well, he also did this one where he jumped into a wheelchair and went, "I have crippling depression." Yeah. Oh. So, so it's, everybody it's like has a, a joke. Is like, "I have crippling depression." Oh god. Yeah, it's like, lol, I can't get out of bed. <laughs> imagine, if, imagine if someone was actually trying to like tell someone that they have depression and then someone just thought it was a joke. Yeah. Because it's like become a saying. It's it's difficult. It is difficult. I w- but I would say literally just take them to a side and just be like are you okay i really don't know if you're being serious because mm. mm-hmm. people wouldn't say oh i've got cancer for a joke would they no. no and the thing is they're probably thinking that they're seeing those kind of things if they are seeing them as a joke in company where everyone will take it as a joke yeah mm. um but you just have to remember that it's more common than people let on yeah. and i think a yeah. lot of it is because we don't chat about it so People think mm. it's kind of funny to say, mm. I want to die. Mm. It's not really 
it's not really... It's not a funny thing to feel, no, definitely. No, so. of course it wouldn't be. Mm. So, yeah, it's true. How to cope when you and your partner both have mental health issues? Um, obviously try and support each other. But I think it's it can be hard if you're both suffering at the same time and then you need to help each other yeah. at the same time because you're not really in the right state of mind to help each other. Definitely. <laughs> I just gave like a negative answer then. Um, well, you're not, we're not going to lie. Of course it's hard, it's, but you still got to sort of put yourself first and think, right, I need to focus on myself because if you're not in the right state of mind, how can you help your partner? Honestly, I, I just think you have just be there for each other but also take into account how you feel and make yourself feel better before you try and help someone else. Yeah, and just tr like learn the right things to say and ask each other like things that could upset the other person. Yeah, and I feel like just being near each other, just hugging or whatever. The people that don't have mental health issues are obviously going to have good and bad days. Of course, you'll both have bad days at the same time, even if you didn't have mental health issues. That's exactly what you just said. Yeah. yeah. And everybody, everyone's relationship has bad days. Of yeah. Because of mental health. It's true. You were flappy. Flappy. I love it. Leah's the worst accent. No. You say something and I'll copy you. No. <laughs> No. Um, the worst the worst one that people make fun of me for is stuff like spider, queer, fire. Spider, queer, la fire. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait. You always sound Indian when you're doing <laughs> when you're doing accents, you always sound Asian. No, so so say something that I can copy. Um, Let me get my voice ready. <clears throat> we'll do a competition, who can do it best? But it's my voice. Oh, oh, oh I mean against you two. <laughs> it's like I think I can do my own accent the best. <laughs> I think so, so too. Funny. You can speak in an English accent, we'll see. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Can I buy a drink, please, Cakey Bam? Sure. Okay. So, you guys can see that wifey over there is not enough a good driver. Is it what driver? Is not enough a good driver. Enough. Is ne an alpha good driver? But what's that in English? It's, it's, not, not, it's, it's not an awful good driver. It's not okay. People in Ireland say that as well. Can you say it? Do no. you go fast? Come on, what it was that you say. Yeah, that's, that's, it's very uh, sexist, but oh, I don't want to get wifey. <laughs> say it, okay. Go on, just say it, say it again. Say um, it so sentence. that wifey over there is near enough a good driver. That wifey over there is near enough a good driver. She only laughed at me. Do it again. It was good. Say it again. That, I'm not looking at you. That driver over there is near enough a good driver. That wifey over there is near enough a good driver. <laughs> that was better. That was so cool. <laughs> I probably won't be able to do it either. And then you've got to do that. It's okay. Okay, okay do yours. I so love how, how you've like gone from tips to actions. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh. help yourself by laughing. Yes. <laughs> uh, that wifey over there is near enough a good driver. That wifey over there is near enough a good driver. <laughs> <laughs> so corny. <laughs> Is Nia not a good driver? Do yours, I can copy that. What? Say yours, I can do that one. Say what? Just say what you just said. That wifey over there is near enough a good driver. That wifey <laughs> over there is near enough a good driver. <laughs> that wifey over there is near enough a good driver. <laughs> I've gone from like all, all the way down south and all the way up north. And Leah just thought that was good. She thought she did a good impression. <laughs> well, I did it better than usual. That wifey over there is near enough for a good driver. <laughs> Do you think that's good, Leah? Well, I don't know. I can't hear myself back. <laughs> when you hear it. When you hear it back. You She'll be like, okay, now, okay, yeah. you have to do ours. Okay, give uh, me something to see. Uh, um, well, uh, do we both sound the same or do No, not at all. We don't, okay. No. Okay, first Do an Essex here. accent. First. No, it's my accent. You probably don't even know what an Essex accent is, do you? Is it what you sing like? Yeah. In which <laughs> case, yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to pad it. Like, you're well, just my parents say something. think I'm posh. Do I sound posh? They think I sound posh. I think all English accents sound kind of posh to me. <laughs> Okay. That was not posh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Your illusion of poshness is gone. Um, Who should go first? That's such good. Oh, it's such it's such bad weather outside. See it again. <laughs> oh, it's such bad weather outside. Oh, it's such bad weather outside. <laughs> Bus is red. There's no green buses over here. 
that bus is red. There's no green buses over there. Oh, no, there. I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> so, so cockney. <laughs> okay, what should I say? Um, would you like to go to the park? No, you don't sound like that. I thought I'd sound extra poor. No, talking about you. Are you making out your bush? Would you like to go to the park? Would you like to go to the park? <laughs> Does it sound like right, so do my this show and then afterwards straight away do my accent. Okay, so you say would you like to go to the park? Would well, you, okay, okay, mine, well, mine first. Yeah, you're first. You're first. Okay, so would you like to go to the park? Would you like... You go, you go first. Oh, doing your accent. Yeah. Right, do it again. Would, would you like to go to the park? Would you like to go to the park? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Would you like... Yeah. Do it again. <laughs> would you like to go to the park? Okay. Would you like to go to the park? Would you like to go to the park? Would you like to go to the park? Would you like to go to the Would you like to go to the Right, so that is the end of the video. We hope you guys enjoyed it. It was very messy. And sorry that I gate crashed. No, it's fine. <laughs> it was lovely having you here. I think it was really funny actually. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to film the video. Yeah. And to eat food in the car in the middle of London. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> With foggy windows everywhere. Yeah. It's been fab. It's been fab. I think it's raining. Yeah. <laughs> but if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Where's your thumb, Kit? Two thumbs like Caitlin, please. We extra, need... extra thummy. <laughs> <laughs> and subscribe and yeah. Do all that jazz. Bye. Cheerio.